Wake in the water, red stammering of the poor. A feather from an angel obtusely torn from the cosmos tilts in the air. On this side, the waves. My feet cultivate a sudden presence of little shells. Mud and sand are present in its ominous monotony of color. Behind a darkened edge of air, the battered avenues of the evening, the recoil that awakens your being in its closest and most inconclusive abandonment. I am here too. I testify to being the one who strikes at the wind looking for himself. The landscape links the man who sleeps under an awning to the other, who passes by opening garbage bags asking for dreams. It is some March or November, a June 15, for example, the spine of a fish and some clouds, and the hemisphere in mercury that is rather reminiscent of a stalactite. I insist on the body that is everything looking at the sea. That which I am has for itself barely a gob of stinking words of tar. Noxious. Stuck in the idea. And what next? Well, we'll issue an intrusive sound like a bell in such destitute places. The rain continues. And in the distance, I think I see a sailboat. Every death speaks to me. They're gathered around my bed. Deaths with handsome scars on their breasts. Pale deaths with bony hands firm on a scythe. All those deaths regard and circle me. They seem to laugh or cry or to be lamenting the waste of time spent before the spectacle of the would-be suicide. These deaths come and go and stare at the empty vials of pills, the whiskey bottle, the farewell letter. Cleanliness, order, total respect towards the stiff garbage that is the body already laid out on a plastic sheet, safe from dust and humidity. Those very deaths, disappointed in me, shake their heads to convey their response. Negative, weary, disgusted by the sweaty human crock that cannot even accomplish, with minimal decency, the sacred ritual of dying. The deaths that no longer expect, no longer hope for more, that have left, marched away as the bile, the waste, the rot are vomited away. Whisper among themselves, tell each other things, pass through the door and have it barely left when a guardian, a huge shadowy dog, a vast collection of fleas that regards me with total disinterest, disbelief, a yawn as he nips at his hide, his crutch, the mange that afflicts everything in the room and time. Write poetry. Be harsh with it. Use the knife blade on it, rough shards, the crushed mortar from bricks. Throw stones at it, pounce, at all costs. Be threatening with your body. Let the suicidal cry of the Viking penetrate skin even beyond walls. Harbor no aspirations. 
aim for nothing is spectacular. Never initiate this mug, cold plot of self-deception. Accept no praise, no slaps on the back. Just kill. Just look for the heart of the enemy in every leg-snapping bite you aim at the world. Get used to death, to bury your guts. If you wish, take the trouble to strap on a suicide belt. Few care. Nobody cares. It is meaningless, that mountain of words drowning inside of you. For your evening meal, cook up the weedy growth that crowns your old wounds. Think, think very carefully about objects that may be thrown so as to avoid risking their malfunction and turning on you, boomerang style. Write poetry without thinking of anyone else. Write as if your concubines were the Black Death and the plagues of Egypt. Note, these are merely notions that occur to the undersigned ancestral rot, nominal leper colonies, tricks wrought by fanaticism. Become poetry. Masturbate with it, love it, and also destroy it. Never sleep with other poets, as that produces an infestation of tender feelings. There you have the truth about all the well-known lies. Write with all the conviction of hot soups in winter. Those fed to us with little airplanes to the mouth to cure colds and every crisis of hypothermia.